the peloton watching how it goes here jaco taking control at the front that'll be for simon yates they'll keep an eye on it harper looks like he's riding off the front Chris Harper, we finally got a chance to catch up. Yeah. The aim going into the whole week really is, you know, to get the jersey in the team. Um, doesn't really matter who who is in the jersey. Um, just more of a case of getting it in the team. Obviously, the way the race played out, we we're in a great situation all day. We had everyone on top of everything and then myself and Plappy got away with 100k to go and you know it's pretty Sorry. ambitious to uh to go from 100k to go you never know what will happen especially around Bunning Young I've had uh been feeling a million dollars around there and the next lap uh being completely hunger flat and barely doing uh doing 200 watts so the elite men's road race, more than 100 riders on the start line, 186 kilometres, and it exploded early. The fastest first five laps in the history of the race around Mount Buninyong. I think we animated the whole race, and then, yeah, it was pretty much just uh, two up chop off with, uh, with Plappy there, and then, um, yeah, super happy for him to like you said, do uh, three in a row, I think it's pretty special. So, um, yeah, happy for him to be in the jersey and happy to uh, be a part of it. Any team that knows me or a coach who knows me well uh, would say the racing that suits me is, you know, possibly long, hard, hard stages of a Grand Tour, but also, you know, stage races and Grand Tours where everyone's starting to get very fatigued. I seem to respond quite well. Um, I wouldn't say I get better or anything, but probably just the, the rest of the bot peloton starts to get fatigued and I still can do the same as what I can do at the start of a Grand Tour. Um, so I think that's, that's probably one of my biggest strengths is normally, uh, I think I even, you know, without being arrogant, probably showed that this year at the Tour, I uh, stayed pretty consistent throughout the race and um, into the into the back end of the tour I was still feeling quite good uh, supporting Simon there and uh, yeah I think that's the the type of racing that suits me or these climbs in Europe which are 40 minutes plus I think I think that's that's my strength and um, also been working on you know get, getting better at my weaknesses which is these short explosive climbs and efforts um, and I think, I think that's that's getting a little bit better as well. Has your body changed during the, the longer world tour seasons that you've done? No, not really. I think uh, since, yeah, since before I was a professional up until now, I, I mean, I now know my body a bit better, I'd say, uh, just having a, yeah, what is it, four seasons as a professional behind me. So... Yeah, no, I think I know what works well and, you know, when I'm pushing it too far with those certain things like weight and all that. But, um, yeah, I'd say for the most part I'm pretty pretty consistent, know where I need to be at certain times of the year and, and yeah, it doesn't really change too much for me. It seems your pigeon told us that it's super domestic. Do you have leadership aspirations? Do you want to sort of have a little bit more attention? Do you get to nominate a couple of races? Does it... Get a little bit irritating knowing that you're always going to be at the front for someone else. No, not really. I mean, I I um, really enjoy working for someone like Simon. Uh, he's a great leader, great guy off of the bike as well. So, yeah, it's a pleasure to race with him um, and be at races with him. Just you know, just switching off even and uh, talking about things other than other than bike riding. He's a he's a great guy, and yeah, I think. When you got a good relationship with someone, it's also nice to uh, to be able to ride for them in a in a grand tour. So I mean, 
going into this season again, focus will be to support him at the Tour de France. And if there's opportunity in the lead into the Tour de France to chase a bit of personal ambition, I guess you could say, then I'll, you know, grab it with two hands. Coming up towards the King of the Mountains. I don't know whether I'd say I'm a super domestique, but I enjoy the role of being a domestique for races and and um, trying to help Yatesy and, you know, I believe as well Simon can be on the podium of the Tour de France, so that also motivates me to to try to be as good as I can. Well, this is where the gradients ease off on this climb. They're over the steeper sections, just inside 500 metres to go now. You know, there's really good, talented bike riders in the world, and then there's this handful of guys that are just exceptional and I, I consider Simon and obviously his brother as well in that category you know you got a, a good group of guys who can climb super well and you almost feel like when you're on the limit these guys are just sitting back doing it easy they've got another gear almost um, and you see it in racing like you know there's that select group of guys that are also all evenly matched I'd say um, but yeah, must be must be nice for them. But uh, but uh, yeah, it's it is impressive to to race with and train with. With Simon, he's quite reserved with the media. Can you give us a couple of little anecdotes about some of the fun stuff that you do? He's just a nice nice person in general. You can have a conversation about you know a lot of different things with him, and also he's uh, you know very helpful as well with. You know, myself coming to the team, he's you know, give me advice on uh, training or nutrition, different things that he's found. You know, he's had a long career now and been a professional since he was pretty young. So he's always open to helping everyone out on the team and teaching us all different things. Um, but yeah, even just, you know, sort of switching off and talking about things outside of cycling. Um, you know, talking about where we live in Andorra, different things like that, or talking about, you know, trips he's been on to uh, different parts of the world and all that. So, yeah, he's just a nice person, relaxed, good to be around. And, um, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of pressure when you're, you, you're there and expected to uh, be on the podium of a grand tour, but you never really feel it with him. He's just always uh, very casual and friendly and easy to get along and chat with. There's a great comparison on off road of course, you've been there at Dumbo, Visma when the team really came of age, let's say. Two questions, can you compare Simon and Primoz? And then secondly, how was it in the, the years with Dumbo, Visma where they did just sort of take it the, up to the next level? Did you, is there something that you've taken to Jayco from that experience? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think I came signed for Jumbo Visma just as they were you know, right on the cusp of becoming, you know, what they're seen as now as, you know, the best or at least one of the best uh, teams in the peloton. I remember as I was sort of negotiating my contract, they were at the Tour de France winning the team time trial, for example. Um, and, yeah, I learned a lot at Yumbo, which was great. Then coming to this team, you know, I learned a lot about nutrition, training, altitude, all these things, they're very um, calculated, I guess. And yeah, they think about all the little details of about how to get to the race in the best best possible shape. So I definitely learned a lot from there and brought a lot personally here. That like the way I prepared for the tour um, last season is probably in my head something that I saw what Yumbo did uh, with their Tour de France team and I incorporated into my preparation as well with you know a couple blocks of altitude split up with um, with a race so I definitely learned a lot from them. Um, I didn't race with Primoz a heap especially when I first went to the team. I did did do half the Vuelta in 20 21 with him um, but unfortunately he he crashed out which was a bit of a, bit of a shame because yeah I think he would have really uh, pushed pushed uh, Remco all the way to Madrid that year he was he was getting better as he'd crashed out of the tour and 
I think he was getting better and better um, as the race race went on. But uh, yeah, I, uh, comparison Simon and Primoz probably relatively similar in the way. They're both um, both very relaxed guys, both very open to share knowledge with less experienced riders in the team. Um, and similar in a way that they're quite relaxed and then when they know they're going really good, uh, you can sort of tell because they're, you know, very switched on in the team meeting, very uh, like, no, nah, I think we should make the race hard, we should take it up sort of thing. So you can really tell when, uh, when they're confident in their, in their shape. I'm just trying to get a, a take on how it affects your mind when you're doing your training. Do you also get that endorphin happiness and, uh, and a sense of satisfaction or you're just looking at it as a physical exercise? I know what you mean. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I love training. Um, some guys are the opposite. Some guys sort of dread the training, I guess, a bit and love racing. Um, but yeah, ever since I started cycling, I really love love the training. I love the process of trying to get better, which I feel like at training you're in control of everything. So you you know what you put in, you get out. Um, so yeah, I really love the training aspect. Of course, certain times of the year, training is very intense and very you know you have a schedule and you stick to it, sort of thing. If you're really hating getting on the bike to train, you're not going to rock up to a race in good shape either. So it's definitely finding a balance of pushing yourself, but also not being in a hole, so to speak. Um, and then, you know, there's always certain types of it, times of the year, sorry, where you can maybe mentally switch off a little, not switch off, but you sort of have these freer periods. It's like, oh, if I want to go out on the gravel bike for a five hour ride, instead of do five hours on the road, I'll go do that just for some something completely different. And, you know, it's still a, still a good day of training five hours on the gravel bike, but it just feels, to me, it almost feels like doing an entirely different sport. It's just, you know, like a bit of a mental break from the road. Um, so yeah, there's times of the year where I'll go out and do do that, and I guess other guys do that with mountain biking or whatever, or times of the year where you might start doing some jogging or, you know, still keep yourself in shape, but just uh, just give yourself something different to do. Thanks very much. No worries. Thank you very much. Cheers.